Hey guys, today's video is a little bit more focused on those of you that are content creators that happen to be using a Canon EOS camera of some sort. And for you guys, I am doing a very quick app overview of DSLR controller. Um, and it is available for Android and I cannot recommend it enough. So let's talk a little bit about that and how it can be used to you or for you so you can create better content. Let's go. Okay, so this app, like I said already, is available on Android, does not require root, um, and it is in the Play Store, all right? And it's just called DSL DSLR Controller. It is developed by Chainfire, who's a well-known developer within the Android community in general. And on screen, you should be seeing what my tablet right now, my Pixel C, is seeing. And this is done through a connection, a USB connection, straight into the camera itself. Now I use an adapter to convert my type C over to type A USB, which then goes over into, I think uh, the 70D that I'm using uses like a type B connector or something like that. Um, I believe is the, the type of connector um, that's on the camera. But the app simply shows me exactly what the camera is seeing, but it also gives me on screen different um, options that I can control within the software. And I can capture either video as I'm doing right now, or I can also capture individual pictures from a distance and see exactly what the display would be shown. Except the difference being this display obviously is much larger than the display on the 70D, which allows me to, to see better detail. For example, if there are parts of the scene that are overblown with highlights because of it's overlit. I can see that better on my tablet than I can on the, um, the the screen on the camera itself. The other cool thing that I can do even while we're shooting, which certain certain options become disabled while shooting, um, but one of the things I can do is I can change the ISO and turn it to 6400, and I suddenly become extremely overblown, and I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 let's turn ISO to auto and it automatically filters it back down to what it thinks it should be. Or I can go ahead and change that to the manual 125 and leave it put there. So I can do those types of things which are invaluable while you're sitting or standing wherever you would be in the shot. I don't have to walk up to the camera. I can see exactly how I frame into the picture from a distance. The cable I'm actually using is something like a nine foot cable. And with this lens, I'm always going to be closer to the camera than nine feet, but not always within arm's reach. So this allows me to take those controls from the camera and deliver them to myself. I can change what type of autofocus mode I'm using. Right now, it is simply spotting. Um, I actually believe the it almost froze on me. So right now, I'm actually using the um, autofocus mode that just focuses on the face. Um, and, and I will note there, and the reason I was looking down is the app itself sort of froze a little bit, um, but the camera continued recording anyways. So I can actually turn off autofocus if I want to, um, and turn it on to manual focus. Um, other things you can change is the white balance. However, that is one of the disabled settings while you're actually recording. Um, and you can change basically anything that the camera itself can change from the settings menu there. You can change on the app. So you never have to walk up to the camera and you can keep, you, you can keep your distance and, and be exactly in the scene where you want. Or you could mount this display by the camera with um, one of those magic arms or whatever they're called. And then you would be able to have a larger screen as a viewfinder. Um, on the display itself, it'd make it a lot easier to see. So there, there's a lot of diversity with this app. By the way, it doesn't just work with tablets or anything like that. You can definitely use your smartphone. Um, you will probably need to buy an adapter cable to turn. Like I said, it, it's a weird connector that the camera uses. I believe is Type B. Uh, most Type B cables terminate to a Type A on the other side. So you'll probably need an adapter, whether you use a micro USB if you have an older Android phone or a USB Type C OTG adapter. Um, works great. Like I said, I can't recommend this app enough, and I know I'm rambling at this point, but it's a cool app and I did want to share it for you. So that's the little sharing. 
or sharing is caring part. If you like this video and you like me showing you, because I've done it before, if you like seeing apps like this um, that I use on a regular basis and you like seeing those recommendations, give me a like down below. Really appreciate that. Share it down below. Um, that's great too. You can follow me on Twitter. My tag is at Hoosier Hardware. I'm Shane. I'll see you in the next video.